Hey, good evening, everybody. Hey, for those who are checking in with us tonight, go ahead and log in. It's good to see everybody this evening. Go ahead and log in and uh, don't forget, comment uh, that you're here and so that we know who is gathered with us this evening as we gather together uh, in a time of prayer. Uh, it's been a hot, hot day. <laughs> so um, it's good to get a little break tonight. How about those storms last night? I don't know if any of you experienced some of those winds and those rains. Oh my goodness. They uh, they came up quite fast, I thought. All of a sudden, the skies got really dark and everything went went crazy. I know there was some damage. So if any of you had any of that damage from that, uh, our, our, prayer, our thoughts and prayers are with you on this time. If there's anything we can do, please let us know. So again, as you're as you're checking in and clicking in and logging in and starting your watch parties for tonight, go ahead and comment. Let us know that you're gathered here with us tonight. So, hey, Larry, it's good to see you guys. Uh, glad you're with us tonight. Hi, Jenny. Hey, Fred. Uh, hopefully you're getting a little bit of cool breeze tonight um, and uh, enjoying maybe some, some air conditioning because, man, it has been hot. <laughs> it has been hot. Hi, Janet. Hi, Bob. How are you guys doing? Uh, boy, I miss having you guys uh, on Sunday morning, but we know that you're with us in prayer, and so uh, that's great. So good, good to have you joining with us tonight. Hey, Sherry, how's everything? Hope the family's doing well. Um, oh my gosh, Carol, those storms were amazing, amazing. I couldn't believe it. It just, uh, it got darker than dark uh, last night, and that wind picked up. I know some of the churches in our area had some some damage to their outdoor pavilions, so keep them all in prayer as well. Hey Jim, it's good to see you. Glad you're joining with us this evening. Hope everything is well with you. Here's my wave back. That's my <laughs> that's my emoji <laughs> to wave back to everybody. Hey Joan, glad you're checking in. And don't forget, if you're joining in with us tonight, you want to go ahead and start a watch party to get uh, some of your other friends and family and neighbors from your, your address book, I guess they call it, um, or your contact list. Uh, go ahead and do that. Uh, and and, and uh, we can make the circle even even bigger. Um, uh, I, I just wanna tell you tonight about the power of prayer. I am amazed at how people can come together and, and the sharing of joy and the sharing of concerns and the sharing of grief uh, with people uh, can make the world a, a much, much, much better place. Uh, I know uh, at First Church, our prayer warriors have been very busy um, praying for our entire congregation um, and also those prayers that each of you have sent in uh, through the, the email list, prayer list at firstumcmillville.org or you've called into the church and asked to be put on the prayer chain. And, and uh, I want to tell you today, I got some, some beautiful news from one of our family members at the church. Their daughter was... Um, really struggling. She was having some uh, internal problems. She had been in and out of the hospital. Um, and during some of the exploratory work, they had even punctured uh, the insides of her and they weren't aware of that until after she had gone home. She was back in the hospital. And, you know, I just felt so bad for this young girl to have to go through uh, such a such a tragedy and, and not knowing what was going to happen. And so they were getting ready to do surgery. And the doctors came into the room and um, and they told the they told the parents that they don't know how this happened, but their daughter had been completely healed. That's right. Um, the doctor said they don't know how that happened, and I was like, Oh, I do. <laughs> I know exactly how that happened. God's healing hand, the great physician, stepped in, um, and she has been healed, and she's being released, and she's coming home. So. Um, amen, and praise God, and, and all those wonderful blessings uh, for that family. Prayer is something that is very powerful. It connects us, and it works. Yeah. And I don't say it works because that means we get whatever we ask for. That's not what prayer is about. Prayer is about building our relationship with God and, and growing our faith roots even deeper. And so um, to, to hear the story of a family to be able to say to doctors and nurses and scientists, we know how she was healed. We know that God stepped in and this was God's plan and this is what God wanted. And so that's just truly amazing. So thank you for all of you who continue to keep the church and all of our members in prayer and keep our city in prayer um, and, and also to keep our country in prayer. You 
hopefully you're not watching the news, but I know you can't avoid it and you're seeing the things that are happening around our country. And so many things are happening that just seems to be complete chaos. The uh, people don't know which way to turn. Um, and and it's difficult. And we're we're all trying to plan for the future and we don't have no idea what we're doing. Um, I mean, that's what it comes down to. We, we, we just don't know. And so even at the church, we're trying to plan on when can we reopen and when will it be safe and how will we do it and what will it look like? And it there's just so many unknowns and we just want everyone to be safe. Um, and, and I know the same thing is happening with our schools. So I keep our, our school boards and our superintendents and all those who are making decisions, um, even the politicians who are making decisions um, uh, over and, and above the, the schools, um, it is difficult. I can't imagine how torn they are, uh, wanting to get the kids back into a sense of, of scheduling and normalcy and and uh, being able to educate someone across the computer is, is very, very difficult um, for an adult, let alone for an elementary school or a, or a middle schooler. It, I, I just can't imagine it's got to be more difficult. And so one of my prayers has been and will continue to be for our school administrators and, and our teachers trying to figure this out. We all want everyone to be safe. I don't think there's anyone that doesn't want all of our children to be safe. But how do we do that with this unknown threat? Uh, that we just can't seem to really um, fight against. And so, you know, definitely let's keep all of those in prayer. So as you're checking in tonight, go ahead and uh, start a watch party if you'd like, or um, let your friends know that we're gathering together for prayer. Uh, make sure you make a comment uh, there so we know who's with us this evening and who's gathered with us in prayer. Um, you know, this week, uh, this past week, shortly after we had our last prayer session, we lost... Um, we lost a person in the world who, who really is an icon, uh, someone who lived a life uh, walking what they thought was correct and, and constantly changing and doing what he needed to do. And when, when John Lewis passed away, we lost, we lost something extremely valuable. And my hope and my prayer is that what we often do as humans is that when we look back after someone has passed and, and we begin to somewhat idolize their lives is that we will see the, the many, many years of work he did as a civil rights activist. Uh, and all that he did to raise awareness was, was amazing. I, I knew a little bit about him, but I didn't know the full story. And I, I probably still don't know the full story, but I did get to look back and see even how his, his activism transitioned and it changed over the years was just inspiring. Uh, he did not start out one way and end up the same exact way. He grew and he learned and he listened and he adapted. Uh, and it was truly amazing. And, and to think the things that he had gone through. I just, I just want to go over some of those things with you because I, I was so amazed by the work that he did um, and, and what an inspiration he was. Um, and so I kind of looked up a little bit of a couple of biographies of his to see that uh, when he was five years old, the story was told that he used to preach to the chickens on his family's farm. He, he wanted to be a preacher. And no, he didn't end up being a preacher. He ended up being a politician, but he preached. He preached every day of his life. Um, he, was, he was a politician, but he was, he was a civil rights leader. He, he was a human being who loved humanity. Um, everything that I read about him was, was that he, he is this, his, his, one of his biographies says that he, when he was six or seven years old, he had never seen a white person. And then when he did, unfortunately, all he had was the worst experiences that an African American man could have. And that, that just truly touches me. And there's just no way to, to apologize for that. And, and he grew up experiencing that kind. And, and he was motivated by that. And I believe he allowed God to use him. Um, he was one of the original 13, what they called freedom riders. Uh, when, when John Lewis was growing up, public transportation was, was segregated, was split. You, a white person and an African American could not sit next to each other on public transportation. And so, um, he and 12 others decided that they would take a ride from, I believe it was from Washington, um, 
down south and Washington to New Orleans. And they would sit next to each other. And that was just a simple act of sitting together um, as they were traveling on public transportation. But they experienced such hatred and such atrocities and, and violence. Violence. He, he was even knocked unconscious in a bus depot for what he was doing. Um, it just amazed me in how he, he, he literally, you know, got right back up and got, got right back on that and, and continued with what he knew what was right. He, he served a long, long time as a politician representing his people from the Atlanta area. Um, he even graduated from theological school and he was, he was ordained as a Baptist minister. Um, and, and he was involved in so many things that, that I had learned about uh, in history class. Uh, he was right there involved in, in some of those, in those marches. He was involved in Bloody Sunday, if you uh, learned about that in school or, or have done a little research uh, yourself about what happened there. But <clears throat> as he was doing these things, one of the things that he, he said was, um, it's, it's okay to engage in good trouble. It's, it's, it's okay to, you know, cross that line. Um, good trouble is necessary trouble. And the story that, that I read about John Lewis as he was continuing to develop who he was as a, as a faithful follower of Christ and um, as an African-American man in the, in the United States. It says that while he was a student, he attended um, non-violent workshops. And these workshops were held at Clark Memorial United Methodist Church. And these workshops had an impact on John Lewis about whether or not trouble was necessary and whether violence in any level was necessary. And he, he shifted his, his thought and he shifted his direction and he shifted his discipline and his, his whole philosophy became one of nonviolence. And he lived it very honestly for the rest of his life. So much so that this is one thing that really struck me about this man. In 2001, three days after the 9-11 attacks, John Lewis voted to give um, President Bush the authority to then go after and use force to go after these, these terrorists. And, and he said that was one of the most difficult votes he has ever had to make. And it, it was about using violence. Um, and that's how much he was moved by that. And you know, our Bible, and you all know this, our scriptures are filled with verse after verse about the love of Jesus Christ. And we see example after example of how he loved those who the rest of his culture that was around him, even his own disciples whom he chose, were not exactly welcoming to others. And verse after verse after verse in our scriptures is about the love of another human and, and that there is no difference and that what we see should be similarities. And what we know is that we are all sons and daughters of God and we are all of one family. And, <clears throat> you know, you, you look in the, the letter of Ecclesiastes and it says, you know, there is, there is the fear of God that can help us to keep our commandments, but there's also the love and the respect and knowing how much God loves us. And so in return, in, in exchange, in deep gratitude, we keep the commandments because of that. It's, it's, it's honoring and respecting our Creator because that's how much our Creator loves us. And not just us, but I like to think of it this way. God loves you, and God loves you so much that when I look at you, I can't help but love you because God loved me the same way. All my faults, all my failures, all the things that I've done wrong in this world, you know, all the times that I've asked for forgiveness and he gives it. And I can look at any other human being and see the same exact thing. And, and I can hear that in John Lewis's biography. And that's just, it's just incredible. And it's, and it's moving to me. Um, we often hear that God's word is authority. And I'm not sure if authority is a good word because so many of us rebel from authority. But it's authority out of love, and it's authority of wanting the best for us, and it's authority out of 
wanting to rebuild the Garden of Eden right here, right here in Millville. And it's not a Garden of Eden where um, all the flowers are beautiful. It's a Garden of Eden where there is no violence because we all love and care for one another and respect one another and value one another and want to lift one another up. Um, and, I, and I see that breaking down even more now that there's all this chaos and uncertainty in our world. Um, at First Church, we're going to be looking at this for the next couple of weeks in our sermon series. We're going to be looking at the uncertain time uh, that a church has to face. And this is this is certainly one of them. And one of our best ways of doing that is to look at some of the, the Bible characters, look at some of the people in the Bible who, who are um, examples for us. And so we're going to do that over this next couple of weeks at, at First Church. But the uncertainty in the world can really drive us um, and, and motivate us. And it can, just like anything else, motivate us to positive or motivate us to negative. Um, and I see signs that we're, you know, around that we're better together. I I know that to be true, but I wish we would live it and and that we would uphold it. So I just wanted to give you a little background, a little research that I've done on John Lewis because uh, I'm not sure his story has been told perhaps as as widely as it it could have been told, and I'm sure that we'll be hearing a lot more about his life and and what he have, has done. And I, I'm hoping that he's a motivation. Uh, for all of us to do that. Um, I I mean, we don't need any more motivation. We, we're followers of Jesus. So that's the best motivation we could, we could find. Um, and that's for sure. But we have to know that once we've decided to do that, and, and all of you have decided to do that, that's why you're here tonight. That's why you're gathered together with brothers and sisters to pray, because it's a powerful thing that we do, because we believe in Jesus Christ. That's why we're doing it. And so our motivation has to be, okay, what's next? What's our, what's our next step? What, what kind of things can we, can we look for? Do we, um, and unfortunately, so many people in this world today are stepping forward because of fear. And I think when you're stepping forward from fear, you're running away from something. You're not stepping forward. And in all of us, in some way, some shape, some form, God is calling us, whether it's to calm the fear of your neighbor, whether it's to be the voice of calm in the circle that you're in, whether it's to not be the one who lights a fire uh, at work at a water cooler conversation, or or perhaps it's the one to just, you know, bend an ear and, and to listen. Uh, there are people who need to express and try and get out their chaos and their confusion, and um, and maybe even to talk through what, what they don't yet realize is, is hatred. Um but they need to talk through it and they need to get it out and then hear themselves. And perhaps that would make them say, that didn't sound right. But they need to be able to express it. And if we stop that, then we're, we're just putting a lid on a boiling pot. And that, that, that doesn't work either. But we certainly can't keep acting out in fear. I know I had said in my, my sermon on last Sunday about, you know, there, there has been a, a great t-shirt slogan that says faith over fear and you know people are uh, buying those up and but scripture says love over fear and isn't that interesting because love is what we're talking about love is what all of our scriptures say loving one another is the commandment that we've been given um john lewis lo learned and, and practiced nonviolence because of loving one another loving 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 i mean there's just no excuse for for, for not doing it. Um, and it's kind of interesting also to me that when I look at John Lewis's life story and I look at his bio and we see now that he has passed and gone on to be with the Lord, we've seen the beginning and the end, um, but we didn't know the middle. Like I'm sure John Lewis didn't know when he was walking across that bridge and the police were attacking. I'm sure he didn't know what was happening. He didn't know the legacy he was leaving, um, but now he has left it. And, I, I always ask, so now what? What do we do with that? What do we do with John Lewis's legacy? What do we do with the, the, the people who are out of control that we see on social media? What are we going to, to do with that? And I think of a Bible character by the name of Joshua. Joshua, um, he, he struggled with a lot of different things. Uh, but through them, the one thing that we continue to, to hear the message that God gives Joshua, he says, I will, I will go before you. 
So that's great assurance that even though you and I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring in the midst of all this corona and will schools open and will they be closed and will they be online and will they be, you know, half days, full days, well, you know, all of that. Scripture has told us very clearly, God will go before us. God is already there. Just let that soak in. We're not going somewhere that God hasn't been. God, God knows. And he's already there. He also promises Joshua that he says, I will be with you. So while we journey from now to September 1st or December 25th or 2021, I will be with you. I will be with you. God also promises Joshua that I will not leave you and I will not forsake you. So not only has he gone before us, so he's already there in what we're worrying about. And he's going to be with us as we walk along the way to get to what we're worrying about. He's not going to leave us between here and there. He's not going to forsake us. And then he says to Joshua, Do not fear or be dismayed. Do not fear or be dismayed. And I know it's kind of another t-shirt slogan that God's got this, but God does. And we just need to listen for him and to follow him and to act with him in mind. I think that's so crucial right now for all of us. We just need to take a deep breath. Exhale. And calm all of that. Because we are, just like Joshua, we are appointed, we are equipped, we are empowered, and we're not alone. And because of all of that, we can rest in God's assurance of his faithfulness. I know it's been a busy day for some of you, and for all of us, it's been a hot one. And maybe some of you out there love the heat. Um, but it can wear on us. And so now we've come to a time that uh, is a time for us to just cool and calm and try and slow our breathing, try to stop the racing that's happening in our minds so that our physical bodies can get some rest. That's so crucial and so important to all of us. So I want to invite you, first I want to thank you for inviting me into your spaces and Again, if you haven't commented um, that you're here, go ahead and comment so we know who our brothers and sisters are. If you have a specific prayer that you would like to comment, go ahead and put that in the chat box. Um, or again, you can send us an email at prayerlist at firstumcmillville.org or even give us a call at the prayer, uh, prayer line at the church. Um, but go ahead tonight and gather those who are in your space, in your home or in your family room there and, and gather around the the screens and the monitors and the speakers and know that we may not be physically together we are together spiritually and we are connected across the miles together so reach out if you've got a hand there go ahead and grab a hand and let's gather at this time and let's give god what god has asked for a relationship with all of us so let's pray Gracious and Heavenly Father, Lord above lords, almighty and everlasting, we've gathered here this evening with our brothers and sisters. We've, we've gathered together in what seemed at first a very strange and foreign way, and for some of us has now become an, uh, a, a common way for us to be able to be together as brothers and sisters and to be with you, Lord. We thank you that Whatever is about to happen tomorrow, whatever is ahead of us, is not ahead of you. And just like the promises that you gave Joshua, you give to us. That wherever we are going, you've already been there. And that during our journey to that place, you are with us. We thank you that you know the plan and that you know every step between here and there. 
Father, we thank you that we have nothing to fear. And so this evening, as we slow ourselves down and this day comes to an end and we put our heads on the pillows, we leave all of our fears and our concerns and our worries at your feet. We lay them at the foot of your throne and we thank you for taking them. We thank you that you've promised that you go before us. We thank you for the great assurance that that gives to us. And we know that you are completely aware that we need this confidence and we need this assurance in order for us to rest. And it is time for us to rest our minds and our physical bodies before we, before we get up tomorrow and start on the next journey. Father, we, we thank you that you've given us great examples of men and women in the scriptures. Tonight we used the example of Joshua, but we've also uh, looked at the example of John Lewis, who, who recently passed to go home to be with you, Lord, who, who lived a life of, of loving and respect and bringing our awareness of the civil rights that are happening and needed. We thank you that these people have already paved the ways, they've already gone through the jungles, they've already cleared the land. And each and every one of them have shown that in their own way they were completely inadequate. But with your power and your guidance and your love, they became mighty examples to us. And Father, we thank you for all of them. Lord, we, we ask you for boldness. We ask you for a deeper faith so that we too can take the next steps that you have called us to take on this journey. Help us to trust in you even more and help us when we have unbelief, Lord, and, and when doubts pop up. Precious God, we, we choose to believe that you are able even when we are not and when we don't think we are, Lord. Father, we want to choose love over fear. We know fear is not from you, Father. We know fear is never anything that you wanted us to, to hold on to in this world, but you've given us so much love that it should be filling us and, and overflowing. Love that can help us to take a breath. Love that can help us to show peace and patience. Love that can help us to show kindness and, and to give us an attitude of an open mind so that we can hear others and and to hear their concerns, Lord. We thank you in advance for tomorrow's provision. For we know that any resource we need, you provide. And that if you care for, as your scripture says, if you care for the flowers in the field and the birds in the air, you definitely care for each and every one of us. And we know that you will care for us as we continue to move and journey through this time. Father, we thank you that you didn't leave us alone, but you gave us our brothers and sisters who are gathered with us this evening. We thank you for each and every one of them out there who, who are praying together. And Lord, we know that you hear all, and so we lift up all of their prayers as well. For each and every prayer from one of my brothers and sisters is, is just as vitally important as any others, Lord. And Father, we just... We just want to say that we love you and we thank you for your love. We thank you for your love that covers every detail of our lives. It, it covers our friends and our family. And it, it covers the strangers and our neighbors. and It covers the situations and the circumstances, Lord. It covers every last step we take in this world. We, we love you, Lord, and, and we all trust you deeply and we ask you for the the strength and the wisdom to continue to do that for you are the one who who has gone on before us and who walks with us and who continues to to journey with us and continues to lift our fears so father just like joshua and just like john lewis we love you we thank you and we praise you in your midst precious and almighty and holiest names, all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.
brothers and sisters, I again, I just truly thank you for uh, allowing me to come into your spaces and into your homes. It truly is humbling. And I'm so glad that we can come together and lift one another up. Again, uh, big praises out there to, to Logan's family and, and the great news we received on, on her health condition. But we do have others who, who are struggling, who are going through circumstances. And so please continue to lift them up as well. And again, I can't say this enough, but if there is anything we can do for you at first, please give us a call. Um, you can call the church directly, uh, leave a message, get on the prayer line, uh, speak with our, our administrative assistant and or get in touch with Pastor Jack or I um, and then figure out a way that, that we can all work together through all of this. I also want to just say that if you are in a position where you feel like you want to get out and do some things and, and you're looking to volunteer, um, we are serving the homeless throughout the week, especially now during the heat. Uh, we are providing meals on weekends. We are serving families with food baskets. Uh, so those all those items need to be collected, cleaned, resorted, and, and then handed out or delivered. Um, we're trying to do as much as we possibly can. Uh, but the one thing we definitely can do is continue to be in prayer. And so I thank you all uh, for taking this time. I know you've all had very busy, busy days. Um, and, and to come together and to just, again, take a deep breath. God's got this. And God is in control. So my best wishes to all of you. God bless you. Love you all deeply. And I look forward to seeing you real soon. Take care. Good night.